Well, I was interested from the first that I heard that there would be drilling out in Lake Township and areas outside, quite far outside of my district. So I was following that in the newspaper and, you know, just following it. When I saw a map of Jackson Township, which is part of my district, and the leases that had been signed in Jackson Township, I became frankly alarmed um, because that's where Seastown and Huntsville reservoirs are that serve so many of my constituents. And so I educated myself even more about the drilling process, about the concerns of others regarding the environment, about water quality, um, and how the Marcellus Shale drilling would impact my constituents. So it was really an awareness issue once I became aware that it was going to impact my district so tr dramatically. Then I went to work to try to uh, mitigate the effects that it could have through legislation. People enter into these gas leases as individual property owners and there is no requirement that they notify local municipalities or local elected officials or the water company. Um, the, the first that, that anyone in my level would find out about that is either through the gas company itself, which is how I found out about it, and Canna uh, issued a map of the leases that it held in Jackson Township. And that's the first I became aware that there were leases under uh, contract in my district. So there is no current requirement that anyone be notified when a lease is signed. Really the first that you learn that there is a lease, again, is through, uh, you, I guess you could research the records at the Luzerne County Courthouse as to what uh, property rights have been assigned. But um, as the first that local elected officials would know about it is when an actual drilling permit is applied for or issued. Well, let's deal with the water supply issues. Um, obviously, two of the big reservoirs that serve Wilkesbury City and my district, uh, the west side, um, are in the Back Mountain in Jackson Township, the Huntsville and Seastown reservoirs. Um, and even in Aqua, Pennsylvania, which relies on private wells, uh, private wells owned by the water company, that's how they supply water to their water customers. So it's a public water supply, but it's well water instead of a reservoir. Um, so obviously any contamination of Aqua, Pennsylvania's wells or Pennsylvania American Water Company's reservoirs would have a dramatic impact on Wilkes-Barre City, on all of my district that's served by those reservoirs. Um, and then you add the Nesbitt Reservoir, which is on the other side of the river, um, which also uh, serves part of my district, and the, the effect of a contaminated reservoir or wells is dramatic on uh, my constituents. Well, I really only know the portions of my district that are served by the various reservoirs. And so Seastown and Huntsville serve some 100,000 of my constituents. My, no my notes just talk about 100,000 people in the Wyoming Valley, including residents in Courtdale, Kingston Township, Kingston, Pringle, Swearsville, Luzerne, Courtdale, Wyoming, West Wyoming. Um, and that's just those two reservoirs. Obviously, Aqua Pennsylvania, again, which serves portions of Kingston Township, um, and, and other water companies, smaller water companies, United Water relies on well water in the Back Mountain. So any contamination of the public water supply, whether it's wells for Aqua Pennsylvania and United Water, or Pennsylvania American Water Company's reservoirs, would have a devastating impact on the economic situation in Luzerne County. What do we do if we can't drink our water? Well, PennDOT is restricted um, in what it can do with regard to roadways. 
Um, they can put weight restrictions on certain types of roads. Um, and then the local road issue is even worse because local municipalities that own those roads and the county that owns, lo owns county roads um, ha is very limited in what they can do. Um, currently, the water companies, or the, I'm sorry, the um, gas and oil companies would tell you that they are required to repair the roads. Um, are they going to repair all the roads, uh, 81 and um, 309 and 29 and all of the roadways that are going to be damaged by the hundreds and hundreds of trucks hauling millions and millions of gallons of water and then wastewater away? Um, I think it remains to be seen who's going to pay that bill. Um, but the, the restrictions on what roads can be posted by PennDOT are restricted to state roadways. Okay. Well, House Bill 2609 calls for a one-year moratorium on the, on the issuance of new drilling permits. It does not call for a moratorium on drilling. Um, the, the bill would say that, the bill says that you cannot uh, issue new drilling permits with, for the next year. And obviously that would take effect once it was passed. There are already some 3,100 permits that have been issued in Pennsylvania. There are more than 1,700 drill sites that are active right now. There are so many issues that need to be addressed with regard to the roads, with regard to the hauling of the frack water, with regard to the drilling process itself, um, protecting our public water supply, making sure that our emergency responders are uh, adequately equipped and able to respond to emergencies. All of these things are not in place at this current time. Um, the buffer around the, the uh, reservoirs is only 100 feet in current law. Obviously inadequate. Um, we're not sure that the drilling companies can't drill underneath the reservoirs. So there is much law and regulation that needs to take place before we can proceed any further. So the moratorium on new permits would obviously put a hold on any permits not currently issued and to my knowledge, there are no permits that have been even applied for um, in Jackson and Kingston townships. So let's find out what happens with the Solansky properties, the Buddha properties, um, and the drill sites there. Um, let's see how the fracking uh, wastewater issue um, plays out. But we need to put a moratorium in place in order to update our law and regulation. I know that Pennsylvania American Water Company is developing those plans right now. My understanding is that um, they would use um, another um, water source, Harvey's Creek, for Seastown. I don't know that they have a backup plan in place as yet for Huntsville. But obviously, um, trying to supply uh, alternative sources of drinking water for their customers would be a massive undertaking. We're talking over a hundred thousand customers. Um, and when I went to Dimmick and saw how devastating it is to be without water for drinking, for bathing, for washing your clothing, for cleaning your house, um, people need to be, un be very well aware of the potential for danger here. The, the risk that we're, we're undertaking for the sake of this e economic boom. How, how did the, 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 they take care of the, of the people from Dimmick as far as their water? Well, for a couple of years now, the people in Dimmick have been drinking bottled water and using water buffaloes in their front yards for cooking and cleaning and all of those purposes. Many of those people use uh, their contaminated well water for, for bathing and washing their clothing. And um, some of the people I talked to said that the water burns their eyes when they shower, that their clothes smell from the, from the well water contamination. 
And as much as the gas and oil companies would tell you that they're, they're, those wells were always full of methane, there probably was some level of methane gas in those wells, but not to the extent that there was after the drilling. The drilling was not done properly. Those wells were not, those, those drill holes were not encased in cement properly. And when they drilled through that layer of, that contained the methane, it migrated into people's wells and became, those wells became unusable um, for the, the purposes of bathing, dr uh, washing your clothes, and drinking. So clearly, the, the gas and oil companies were responsible for that. Um, and just in the paper uh, recently, I've learned that um, the, there has finally been an acceptable resolution of uh, supplying an alternate source of water for the people so that they can begin to use their wells again. These are local property rights that are property owners have the right to uh, enter into these leases. And frankly, I don't know that the, the Constitution or uh, current law would prohibit that. Um, but again, what we need to do is update the Oil and Gas Act. We need to update the law and the regulations to put best practices in place to create buffers around our water supply, to give uh, communities the ability to regulate and uh, you know, post their roads adequately. That's, those are the protections that need to be put in place before we proceed any further. Um, but again, you know, this is America. People have property rights. They've entered into these private contracts so what, what we need to do is make sure that the law and the regulation protects the rest of us from this activity that's occurring. Um, it's sort of, people always say, oh, I should have the right to do whatever I want with my, with my property. Well, here's a perfect example of how those property rights are impacting the rest of us with potential harm. So we need to do what we can to protect ourselves. Well, currently, the similarities are that we're not, the law and the regulation do not protect us from these economic activities. That's the similarity. Um, and what I would like to prevent from happening is for the gas and oil companies to reap their benefit, take their profit, and leave the taxpayers of Pennsylvania holding the bag for the cleanup. That's what we need to prevent. We need to protect and, and uh, prevent any mitigating uh, accidents, spills, contamination of our land and water. Uh, we need to prevent it to the extent we can. And we need to make sure that we take a portion of their profit in taxes to protect the taxpayers of Pennsylvania should we have to mitigate the impact of the drilling. These companies go bankrupt leave the area, and just like the coal companies, um, I look around my district and the, the refuse piles, the coal banks uh, that still exist. We had a mine fire recently, not well, a few years ago in Exeter Borough that DEP had to pay to clean up, to put out. Um, so the taxpayers paid for that, even though the, you know, the coal mining companies are mostly defunct um, and have left us holding the bag. Um, and the, the law was not adequate at that time to protect us, and the law is not adequate at this time to protect us from this Marcellus Shale drilling.